All right, y'all. Today we got another one, bro. And this is why Almighty versus Dark Shine is close. I don't know, man. I mean, pretty much My Hero Academia versus One Punch Man. Yo, I'm here for it all, oh, man. I don't know who's going to win this one. I want to say, I want to say Dark Shine, but then again, I want to say Almighty. This, yeah, I don't really know. Wait, I'm, I probably get Almighty, but then again, I, I don't know. Dark Shine did. We're fighting on. Um, uh, old buddy, I forget his name. Um, when he got out of acid, but it like it seemed like he like uh, it, it, it's ain't crazy, man. It's crazy, man. But yeah, let's just get to it, man. Let's just get to it. Link, all that good stuff gonna be in the description. Y'all already know. Let's just get it. Let's just let's just get it. All Might and Super Alloy Dark Shine are two heroes that represent the peak physical powers in their verse. Both are gym rats who make sure to flex their muscles each time they have a chance to. Fem yeah, that dude, that did, that did kind of remind me of Almighty. Every time he he posed, then you know Almighty he be posing. Every time I mean, every time I see Dark Shine pose, I see Almighty be posing and stuff. So yeah, that guy, that yeah, yeah, yeah awfully try to pair up all might against characters from the one punch man verse and who would be the perfect fit other than super alloy darkshine who would win this and who is the strongest hero between the two in this video i'll be taking a look at the like I, said, I might get i might get almighty but again darkshine i don't like i said i don't know bro i don't know characters physical stats abilities battle intelligence and determination in order to determine who has the upper hand we'd also determine where all might would fall in the hero rankings alongside with his monster threat level but before that as always make sure to the choice smash the subscribe button and hit the notification bell for more of these interesting matchup videos thank you So Shinori Yega, also known as All Might, is literally the true definition of power. Became the number one hero and the symbol of peace simply due to being too strong that no villain could ever hope to defeat him. Now we have a decent amount of of information to scale All Might's overall power. But before, it's important to understand that we've never seen All Might fight in his prime, but more so just have multiple statements that dictates where he should. Yeah, I do want to see him in his prime, though, man. I, I really want to see that, though. Should be at full power. Toshinori's main source of strength comes from his quirk called One for All. Although to wield this specific quirk, one needs to be in tremendous shape and peak physical strength. Otherwise, it would act as a double-edged sword. Now, to start off scaling All Might, we begin with speed. After specifically combining 45% of one for all with Fajin, Deku tells All Might that what he's capable of now is on par with him at 100%. With this, in chapter 315, Deku managed to legit outspeed Lady Nagant's bullets using 400%. This has been calculated to Mach 327, which would be massively hypersonic. I want to note that this is extremely tricky since whenever a character is compared to All Might, we don't exactly know whether they're speaking about his prime or his current state. The second the second line of scaling speed in My Hero comes from Star and Stripe's fight against Shigaragi, which is one of my favorites in this series. According to many statements by many reliable characters, Shigaraki at that point is comparable to All Might, and even without this comparison, a character of All Might's caliber should scale pretty closely to these characters if not even above them. Now both Shigaraki and Star and Stripes showed the ability to react to actual lasers. Tomura straight up catches them and reflect them back at Star's direction, who after uses New Order to make the lasers holdable. Despite both of them being impacted by the lasers, they have both showed the ability to react to it, meaning All Might scales very definitively to this if not above it, giving him light speed reactions. Now I get this line of scaling seems pretty iffy to a lot of people out there, although I see no problem with it, since there are multiple proofs that these lasers are indeed real and composers of actual light. However, we'll be using both this and the first feat regarding this matchup. Now when it comes to AP, or I would say how strong would All Might punches be, considering his statement regarding how much it would have taken to defeat Nomu, Prime All Might should be 60 times stronger than the one who created a large tornado and changed the weather, while being extremely mm. conservative due to All Might not needing to go all out to destroy literal father, this has been capped to 2.4 gigatons of TNT, which would be large mountain level. Multiplying this by 60, Prime All Might should be above large island level, while mm. some places Yega to be country level due to Deku and Bakuku's punch in the movie that exerted around 78 teratons of TNT. Funimation considers the movie to be not canon. There are multiple things that happens in the movie that contradicts the main storyline. And 9 being remembered in the manga by Shigaraki serves merely as marketing stance for the audience
audience to go watch the movie. However, we'll still be including this feat in this matchup. One of All Might's amazing qualities as a hero is the ability to not give up. Even in the face of adversity and despair, he still pushes beyond his limits. Despite being extremely weakened and in a sorry state, All Might's toughness, especially in the manga, and his fighting intelligence allowed him to defeat an opponent who not only has the strength to harm him but holds 100 i mean i'm just sorry you sorry you know what i'm saying you sorry you know so i'm just saying i'm just saying plus years of fighting experience all might is the true definition of a real hero my favorite character is hands down in the my hero academia series but can he compete with what's got my favorite though like i said y'all already know uh what his name is the villain guy i forget his name shikarari 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 the guy with the hand shikarari he my favorite bro hands down let's get it dark shine Super Alloy Darkshine, also known as Black Luster, is currently an S-Class hero rank 9. Known for his superhuman physical prowess and excels in hand-to-hand -hand combat, capable of withstanding and fighting dragon level threat monsters. Now in terms of scaling, when it comes to strength, Darkshine straight up scales way above tank top master, Puri Puri Prisoner and early Janos. Janos landed a considerable incinerate blow on a monster called the Deep Sea King and even that did not guarantee the victory. His incinerate prior to upgrading was calculated to be in the range of city level to mountain level. Remember, Genos seeks to attain absolute destructive strength, meaning his attack potency and destructive capacity would get boosted each time he gets an upgrade. Reasons for mentioning this is, according to Morata himself, Darkshine with a light... Deep Sea King? Yeah, I like Deep Sea King, bro. He cool. Light touch would be able to destroy a monster who is as strong as the Deep Sea King. Meaning, with a light touch, literally the definition of not even trying, Darkshine can destroy a monster that a city level attack couldn't destroy. This is further backed up by Carnage Kabuto stopping Genesis Incinerate with his actual breath. And in the audiobook, Darkshine defeated Carnage Kabuto in 15 minutes and asked Genos if he can simulate a monster that is even stronger than him. With this, by the very least, Darkshine should be in the ranges of mountain level to island level. Now, when it comes to speed, we can scale Darkshine. Yeah, this the one. I think our, our mining pot got advantage. Got advantage on him because due to the speed to Garu, as the latter was heavily fatigued and poisoned and nowhere near his actual strength and speed, managed to deflect every single bullet of Dark Shower's attack. This legit puts him in the massively hypersonic area. Mm -hmm. Garu's strength obviously multiplies over time, as shown in his struggle against Orochi. This should fairly put him in the massively hypersonic plus area, of which Darkshine pretty comfortably scales to, as shown multiple times to be relative to Garu at least before the latter started to break his limiter. Both has reacted to each other and landed significant blows. Now the second line of scaling when it comes to speed is Genos dodging G-Force lasers, specifically stated to hold the properties of light, alongside with Awakened Cockroach stating he can dodge at the speed of light. While many refuses to take these as valid, and I completely understand why people discredit these, would still be including this in this matchup. Moving on to Darkshine's most impressive category, which is obviously durability, Blackluster himself has stated that even he does not know how to scratch himself. Generally speaking, from a story standpoint, Darkshine holds one of the best defenses, if not the best, in the Hero Association. And while he later on obviously gets completely destroyed by Golden S, it does not show by any means that Darkshine's durability is weak. It's just that Golden S is that strong. Darkshine also states that whenever he is angry, his muscles act on their own. So you could fairly assume that his durability could change due to his mental state. Nonetheless, his fight against Garu makes up the majority of his baseline durability feat. Even when Garu was landing multiple times and using Crossfang Dragon Slayer Fist, an attack that cracked Elder Centipede Exoskeleton, all of that only simply resulted in minor drops of blood. He was shown also treating Evil Natural Waters Blast like a shower. And in the webcomics, he gets brutally punched multiple times by Awakened Garu, but stands up right after. Now, the biggest problem Darkshine holds is obviously his lack of confidence. Yeah, see, that, that's, the, that's the only thing. Like that, That's why I've like... That, that his downfall right now. As soon as his opponent gets the upper hand, he gets scared and loses the will to fight, drastically decreases his chances of winning. While in the webcomic, he showed great resolve to stand up in the face of the strongest monster at that time. However, he was still brutally defeated by Golden S in the manga and did not get back up or fight ever since. Darkshine is extremely powerful. Yeah, lost that confidence It holds amazing strength and durability. But would all of that be enough to deal with All Might?
Now this battle is actually very interesting and during the research I happened to see that the majority of people think that All Might would be a father in the One Punch Man verse. I mean sure, when it comes to high tier characters like Cosmic Fear Garu, Blast, Boros, Tatsumaki and obviously Saitama, it's pretty self explanatory that no one in the My Hero verse can come remotely close to their levels. However, concerning this matchup, I would say this would be pretty close. While both can arguably be relative in speed, with Dark Shine having the upper hand hand if you don't include their light speed feats, I struggle to find any attack potency feat for Darkshine to put him at All Might's level. All Might's 60 times stronger statement made him undoubtedly a large island level of pure punching power. It should be noted that Darkshine could be way stronger than what we have estimated, but judging from the feats and multiple calculations, Toshinori is superior when it comes to AP. But the biggest question is, can All Might bypass Darkshine's durability? Now as we've said in all Might's part, Toshinori is highly intelligent. He'd understand that normal simple attacks like air pressure would not do the trick. We know that Darkshine's durability was bypassed by three individuals, Vomitor Führer Ugly, Golden S, and a Awakened Garou from the webcomics. For starters, All Might can't produce acid, but what he does have is specifically superhuman strength attacks. He'd need to exert the same attack potency as Golden S or Awakened Garou, and to be perfectly honest, that's a very difficult task to accomplish. Within the One Punch Man scaling community, Golden S's AP varies from small country level to multi-continental. This depends on the strength of the A-class hero including to multiply it by the numbers of cells. Taking in consideration Deku and Bakugo's strength in the movie, All Might should be able to break Darkshine's durability if Golden S's AP is small country level. However, he would be incapable to do the same thing if it's multi-continental. In both cases, without using the movie, All Might would not be able to do this without the need of consecutive continuous punches. Granted, we legit have no idea how durable Darkshine is when he is not in a mental breakdown state, as I am one of the people who believes that if Darkshine was confident enough, he wouldn't have been knocked out by Golden S. So as we all know, this fight wouldn't just be All Might throwing punches and Black Luster just stares at him without initiating his own attacks. Both are heavy hitters and exchanges of blows are bound to happen. Based on the relativity of speed, if we include the hind end, punches would connect in both sides. Now is All Might durable enough to take attacks such as Super Alloy Bazooka or Dark Shine's tackle? For this, I think he, I think, yeah, I think he could take a couple of them. It's important to understand that All Might can straight up tank his own attacks, as in numerous occasions it has been stated that Shigaraki is almost as powerful as All Might. According to the doctor, Tomura is indeed in All Might's level but not quite on par with him as that would have overburdened his brain. Other characters like Endeavor legit compared him to All Might, but the doctor would be more creditable due to understanding All Might's actual strength from All For One himself. Reasons I'm mentioning this is because Shigaraki was withstanding multiple hits it's from 100% Deku. Yeah, she can rob, she can rob her, what her name is. Alongside with other overly extensive hits from other heroes, and still managed to continue fighting. While I wouldn't completely say that All Might would not be affected by Darkshine's attacks, both would land significant hits and hurt each other, it would all go down to toughness, endurance, and stamina. The big issue for Darkshine here is that he is fighting against a true hero. So tough he would refuse to lose. Unlike Darkshine who would lose the confidence to fight midway way through the fight. Black Luster, as stated by the narrator in the One Punch Man manga, would not put himself in a fight without a clear outcome of victory or defeat. This would be his overall downfall in or out the verse. Unlike All Might who is literally the opposite, wouldn't fall until victory is assured. Now if Darkshine overcomes his fears, same way he did in the webcomics against Awakened Garu, he would have a chance to win. Otherwise, the verdict of this matchup would be victory for All Might. However, in any case, this would be close. It's not like either characters would destroy or blitz the other easily. If we don't include their light speed feats that a lot of people disagree with, Darkshine would obviously be faster and he would have the chance to hit more blows that would eventually give the victory to him. But for now, based on feats and calcs and determination, All Might should have the upper hand. It's important to know that Darkshine could be way stronger than we know. A character like Zombie Man who legit can fight for 140 hours straight defeating dragon level monsters thought that the 
the idea of Darkshine losing is unbelievable. That's even after fighting Homeless Emperor who can spam destructive attacks with ease. Same argument goes for All Might. As for most of the time, strong characters like Shigaraki who gets compared to All Might, it's never clear if they're talking about his prime or current state. Before ending this video however, All Might as a One Punch Man character would obviously be mid to high as class hero and definitely be a dragon level threat. Mm. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yeah, this was a close one, a real close one. I thought Dark Shine was gonna get it, you know, but Almighty came through with the end because he got that that thing in him. So you already know. Link up in the description below. Like, comment, subscribe. I do, man. Might yet be safe.